In this video, we're going to start looking at the analogs of the logical concepts for PL, and we'll introduce the notion of a counterexample. So, analogous to truth functional, truth falsity, and indeterminacy, you have quantificational truth falsity and indeterminacy. So, a sentence P of PL is quantificationally true if and only if P is true on every interpretation. And then it's quantificationally false if it's false on every interpretation. And it's quantificationally indeterminate if it's true on some interpretations and false on others. So these are basically the same thing as for SL, except instead of being defined in terms of truth value assignments, they're defined in terms of interpretations. Now, um, PL isn't decidable. So there's no general algorithm for establishing that a sentence is true on every interpretation, or for that matter, false on every interpretation. The textbook does talk about using informal reasoning about sentences to reach the conclusion that that sentence has to be true on every interpretation or has to be false on every interpretation. But this sort of reasoning isn't 100% reliable. You know, I mean, a lot of the time it will work, but this is also the sort of reasoning that, you know, historically has led people to believe that non-Euclidean geometry was self-contradictory and space-time was necessarily absolute, that sort of thing. So what we can prove, though, is um, you can prove that a sentence is not quantificationally true by constructing what's called a counterexample. A counterexample is a single interpretation on which the sentence is false. So if you have one interpretation on which the sentence is false, then you've shown that it is not true on every interpretation, which means then that it's not quantificationally true. Uh, so here's an example. We'll construct a counterexample to show that this sentence here is not quantificationally true. And we can use a simple mathematical example for this, right? So the universe of discourse will be the positive integers. We will interpret F as meaning X is even and G as meaning X is odd. And then because this is a categorical sentence, it's an A sentence, what that says then is every even number is odd. That's false, obviously. And because of the fact that it's false on this interpretation, we know that it's false on at least one interpretation, so it's not quantificationally true. You can also construct counterexamples to quantificational falsity. Um, here, you just want to find a single interpretation on which the sentence is true. So we'll find an interpretation on which this is true. Um, we'll use another uh, simple mathematical example. So universal discourse is positive integers. LXY will be X is less than Y. Um, they'll be strictly less than Y. Uh, so then what this is going to mean then is no positive integer is less than itself. Um, or a little more precisely, right? There is no positive integer that is strictly less than itself. Uh, this is true, which means then that this is not, uh, this sentence is not quantificationally false. You can actually show then that a sentence is quantificationally indeterminate with two counterexamples. Um, if you have an interpretation that shows, that if it, so if you have an interpretation on which the sentence is true, and then you have another interpretation on which the sentence is false, right? Then you show that it's sometimes true, sometimes false, which means then that it has to be quantificationally indeterminate. Uh, so we'll do that for this sentence. We've already given one where it was false. So we've done that half of it. So now we're going to give one where it's true. Um, we'll skip the mathematical examples this time. Uh, the example that we use, the universe of discourse will be animals. Well, it doesn't really matter whether they're real animals or not. Um, Fx uh, will be X's yellow-bellied sapsucker. That's one. Gx will also be X's yellow-bellied sapsucker because there's nothing that says that you can't have two predicate letters referring to exactly the same thing. Then what this sentence means is every yellow-bellied sapsucker is a yellow-bellied sapsucker, and obviously that's true, which means that this, is, this sentence is true on one interpretation and it's false on another one, and therefore it has to be quantificationally indeterminate. Okay, so here's a summary of all of this stuff. If you want to show that a sentence is not quantificationally true, construct an interpretation on which that sentence is false. And then if you want to show that the sentence is not quantificationally false, construct an interpretation on which it's true. And if you want to show that it's quantificationally indeterminate, you need two in interpretations, one on which it's false and one on which it's true. Um, 
And no single interpretation can show that a sentence is quantificationally true or that it's quantificationally false. In fact, no finite number of interpretations can show this. Now, as far as the type of examples that you use, um, <clears throat> like I said, when we were talking about interpretations in previous videos, using mathematical examples is a helpful way of avoiding ambiguity. But of course, it's not required, um, as we saw with the, you know, the animal example. Um, however, there's an important theorem here, which is called the Löwenheim theorem. That's uh, Leopold Löwenheim, who's the uh, the mathematician who proved this. The Löwenheim theorem says that if you have any interpretation that makes a sentence of PL true, that sentence is also true on at least one interpretation where the universe of discourse is the positive integers. And then this is also going to extend to, like, for example, interpretations that make a sentence of PL false. Because if you have an if, I mean, if you have a, an interpretation that makes P false, right, then that interpretation also makes the negation of P true. Um, the upshot of this is that whenever you want to show something, there is a mathematical example, right, one where the universe of discourse is the positive integers that will show what you want. Um, so it's always possible to use these. There's also another um, sort of interesting feature about these mathematical examples, which is that you have sentences of PL that are only true if your universe of discourse is infinitely large. So here's an example. Um, this big long thing, notice that you've got three conjuncts here, right? Here's one, here's another, here's the third. Um, to understand this, like what this means, one way that you can understand this is read the G as strictly greater than. So then conjunct number one here says that if X is strictly greater than Y and Y is strictly greater than Z, then X is strictly greater than Z. Right, number two here says, we've actually seen this sentence before, right? It says that for every X, there is a Y such that Y is greater than X. So for every x there's something that's greater than it and then this one here says that no number or no well we're not necessarily talking about numbers right but nothing is greater than itself um if you have a finite universe of discourse at least one of these three conjuncts is going to end up being false it only it can only be true if you have a uni an, an infinitely large universe of discourse so there are times when you need an infinitely large universe of discourse, like the positive integers. You know, they don't come up all that often, particularly in an introductory course, but there are times when it is necessary in order to make a sentence true.